Good evening. Welcome to Meets Rod Shop. I'm Jason. Today we're working on my 1971 Dodge Dart Swinger. We're going to put an ADCO 150 front sway bar on it. Currently underneath the hood I've got a 318 Dodge Magnum with a 46 RH overdrive transmission. Uh, this car is going to get a 360 Magnum in it uh, coupled to a TKO 500 manual transmission. So there's some upgrades I'm going to do uh, before we yank this engine and trans out and put the new stuff in there. So starting with that, we're going to do the sway bar. It's a pretty simple install. It won't take long. It'll probably be a short video, but uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, first things we need to do is we need to take these little angle iron tabs and we need to go ahead and attach them to the lower shock point, uh, excuse me, lower shock mount on the lower control arm on the front end. We'll go ahead and we'll get you in there and I'll show you where they go at. All right, so right there you can actually see the tab on the bottom of the lower shock mount. I've already put one in on the uh, passenger side. So on, on this side, we, this driver side, we got to go ahead, we got to pull that bolt out and then we'll throw that uh, clip in there. So let's go ahead and get that done. All right, we're going to go ahead, we're going to pull this uh, lower shock bolt out. Uh, the bolt head is 5 8 and the nut is 11 16 at least on mine it is. It may be different on yours, but... And this is the plate that you're going to bolt onto it, and you can see it's got the corners cut off on the top, so the, the plate actually goes on just like that, and the corners cut off so that it'll fit into the control arm properly. no attention to the leaking power steering pump over my head or any other fluid under here. It's supposed to leak. That lets you know that the car still has fluid. All right, we've got the bolt back through there. We'll go ahead and tighten it up real quick. I use German torque on those. That's good and tight. All right, now that you've got the lower shock mount tabs put in there for the sway bar end links, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put these tabs onto the K member or the engine cross member, whatever you want to call it. Um, if you remember the well, you don't know this, but per the instructions, the long end goes onto the K member and you want it just like this facing down. So this tab here, the short tab, faces it out the front and is facing down. One other thing to add on these is your K member should have two sets of bolt, hole, bolt holes, two on each side. You want to use the inner bolt hole for, uh, for mounting these. Uh, this, what, this, what this holds is the actual sway bar mount. This holds the lower bolt for the sway bar mount. And you want to use, like I said, use the inboard holes on your cross member for the long tab to go onto. All right, if you look here, I don't know if you could see it or not, but this is the outer bolt hole. This is the inner bolt hole. Like again, you want to use the inner bolt hole. So your tab, you're going to take the long end, you're going to place it on the bottom, and you're going to bolt it on like that. Don't torque it all the way down because you will have to adjust it for that sway bar mount. And like my car, I had to go and I had to drill out these holes to, I think it's 3 8 or 7 16 I can't remember which, but uh, so I have a, a good quality drill, but you could use a stepper bit that works just as fine. But uh, go ahead and bolt those on. I will add that this ADCO kit did not come with washers for the bolts. I don't know if it's the aircraft mechanic in me or what, but to me, every bolt, every nut should have a washer. So I am adding grade 8 washers to these. Although I think they are, yeah, they are. They're, they're grade 5 hardware. Grade 8 washers will make do with it. It's a 9 16 nut and a 9 16 bolt. Again, don't hork them down all the way. You just want to tighten to where you can spin that if you need to. So the passenger side's in. I'm going to go ahead and move over to the driver's side and do that. I'm not going to show you. it. Uh, just repeat on the other side. All right, both sides are tightened up. We're going to go ahead and we're going to slip the sway bar in. Um, Underneath uh, there's a bracket here. You see this bracket that goes between the uh, core support and the K member. You'll slip the sway bar over the top of that and then it'll hang down. All right, now that your sway bar is slipped over the uh, core support bracket here, go ahead and take your rubber or polyurethane uh, bushing, put that over the, the sway bar and get your bracket ready to go on. I will add for the passenger side, at least on my car, I am not running a uh, factory radiator. I'm running an aftermarket radiator. So I ground the corner off 
on the one end of my bracket because it was getting close to the lower radiator hose. So you may have to do that, you may not on yours. Go ahead, slip the bracket over your bushing, and then you got your backing plate here. Slip that up there, put a bolt through there to hold it. Now that you got your bracket over there, like I said, get your backing plate, slip it up behind there, put the lower bolt in to hold it. Go ahead and repeat it on the other side. All right, you can see the spacer or the backing plate is gonna hang down a little bit. Um, just go ahead and snug these up. Um, just make sure you can still move the sway bar left and right because you gotta make sure you've got it uh, equal length centered. And again, these bolts are 9 16 All right, now that you got the lower brackets on there, you got the sway bar hanging, you can go ahead and connect the end links. I'll show you how to do that here in a minute. All right, one thing I wanna add with this ADCO 150 kit uh, for the sway bar is according to their directions, their engineering, the only thing that holds this sway bar bracket to the car is the bottom bolt. The top bolt has no support whatsoever. To me, that doesn't seem right, but they say it's okay. Um, so it's up to you if you wanna install it that way or not. I'm assuming a lot of people have done it that way and haven't had an issue. I went a step farther and what I did is I took a piece of angle, 3 16 angle iron, cut it to size and then welded it to the K-member to come back up and back up this top plate here. Um, I will add, I'm a grinder, not a welder, as in I have to grind my welds after I do it, so that makes me a grinder. So it's not the prettiest welds on there, but uh, they are held onto the K-member um, and that will give this bracket full support then. Um, I'll put a picture in there that, uh, show you what I'm talking about um, with the L bracket installed. So um, let's go ahead, we'll get the, the sway bar back up in place, we'll get these brackets back in, snugged up, and then we'll put the end links on. All right, let's go ahead and put the end links on. It's pretty simple. You got uh, head of the bolt, washer, grommet, grommet, washer, then you got this little spacer, uh, do another washer. Um, of course, that goes through the uh, uh, shock bracket. And then this, the uh, sway bar actually bolts on the bottom side of it. So goes in between the two bottom uh, grommets, then washer and a nut. Let's go ahead and get that put on there, and then uh, we'll snug everything up. All right, we've got the sway bar installed. I did run into an issue where the L bracket on the lower control arm and the sway bar where the end link goes through it was too far apart. So it put the bolt on too much of an angle, and what it would do is it just end up bending that bolt when you round a corner. Um, I think it's because this car is an inline 6K member versus the V8K member. When I ordered the, the sway bar, it didn't say that it was or was not for either model, so I assumed it would fit all cars, but I'm thinking that's, that's the problem with this. So I ended up having to space out the L bracket uh, a little bit over an inch to get the end link where it was straight up and down. Uh, I'm gonna put some pictures up here and uh, I'll walk you through and show you where you can see the drastic difference between where the end link uh, was and where it is now. Um, I got a picture of before and after, but I don't suggest doing that. I'm telling you not to do that, um, but that's what I did on my car. Um, don't do it on yours unless you uh, want to take a chance, but I'm not liable if you choose to do that. Okay, as you can see on the left-hand picture, you'll see how far apart the bolt hole is for the bracket on the lower control arm how far aft it is from the actual sway bar end link uh, where it bolts through there. If you leave such a drastic angle on that connection there, it will bend the bolt. Those bolts are not made to take a sideways uh, torque on them or sideways uh, uh, push on them. It'll bend that bolt. Really, you need that end link to be pretty much straight up and down uh, to get that to work effectively. Otherwise, you're gonna go into a hard corner and it's just gonna bend each end link whichever way you go. So on the bolt, or excuse me, on the picture on the right, you can see where I've put in that spacer. Uh, does it look like a quarter inch coupling for pipe fitting? It may look exactly like that, but uh, uh, let's say it's not just for argument's sake. Um, so I extended that bracket out. It's a little bit over an inch to move that end link more into a vertical position uh, between the mounting bracket and the end link on the sway bar, the hole there. So that'll be a straight up and down uh, force on that bolt so it should stop it from bending. Again, I do not suggest doing this. If you do this, you're doing it on your own uh, and you have uh, uh, taken all liability for that. Um, ultimately, how would you fix it the right way? Probably get some tooling steel, have it milled properly and maybe weld it to the uh, control arm. Uh, but I chose not to go that route again and that's on me and me only. So there you go. So um, other than that, the install went pretty easy. I gotta take the car out and drive it now. 
Um, I'll probably do it when it warms up a little bit. It's about uh, 27 degrees outside right now. Uh, and in Georgia, that's cold. So I appreciate you checking out Meets Route Shop, looking at this video. Um, go ahead, like, subscribe, and remember, keep your head up and your stick on the ice.